Netflix has a new movie streaming, and you know what that means. One more exclusive for you to avoid watching and saving yourself several hours of your life. I, however, did not, and I guess I can be the warning once again for people out there. There are better things to spend your time doing. Don't watch Leave the World Behind unless you want a miserable experience that has no satisfying conclusion. Let's talk about it. Leave the World Behind is a Netflix joint. I love these. They're almost always garbage. And so then I have to spend several minutes talking about how much garbage they are and inevitably get some blowback by the one or two people that actually watched the film and was like, Adam, you're wrong. This was a great thing. Netflix is knocking it out of the park. They're not. I hate these movies. I only watch them because my wife continues to convince me that they're going to be good. She'll go on social media and see some of the actors talking about it. Oh, there's Julia Roberts saying what a wonderful movie this is. There's Mahershala Ali saying, I had a great time in this picture. You're going to love it. And then they have all these influencers saying, watch this movie. It's fantastic. It's unlike anything you've ever seen before. It's like everything I've seen before, but done so much worse. Now, this will be spoiler free for the one of you that actually cares to watch this flick, I will just say that I'm really getting sick of this new, I don't even want to, is it a trope? I don't want, this new, this new like trend that directors or editors are doing where they put movies in acts or in parts or in chapters. This happened recently with Napoleon. This happened recently with the new Hunger Games film. And again, with Leave the World Behind, it's told in four acts or five, I don't know, I don't care. It does nothing for me other than to say, hey, you're going to spend some time here and in the back of your mind, you're going to be thinking, well, how many acts is this? And when's the next one going to come up? And some of the acts go on forever. At that point, you're thinking, are we done with the acts? Did they give up on it? Did they forget about it? It's just an annoyance. The only guy that ever really did this with style and some class is Quentin Tarantino. And he's, he's had those in a lot of his movies to my, I think, unless I just pulled that out of my ass. I'm pretty sure he's done it in several of his films. Regardless, I see this more and more and I don't understand. It's this, this new trend that they're trying out. It doesn't bring anything to the table at all. Tangent aside, this movie, without giving anything away, it follows a couple that lives in New York and they want to get away from it all. Julia Roberts' character notoriously hates people. She doesn't want anything to do with them. I don't remember the names of anyone except for, I think Ruth is one of the people we run into. Mainly remember that one because her name's yelled out loud a lot. And I still might be wrong on that. It doesn't matter. It's Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke. They're married. They have two kids. They take a vacation. They rent this luxurious house out in the woods away from society and civilization. Kind of redundant. I know, whatever. There's a beach nearby that they're going to head out to. And it's just a very gorgeous location for them to get away from it all and get away they do for a little while until the owners show up. That's right. This family, which is, I guess it's just really a, a father and a daughter. They show up, the teenage girl, the uh, Mahershala Ali character. Let's see, his name is G.H. Scott, according to IMDb. Oh, and I guess Julia's name is Amanda. And Ethan's name is Clay. None of this matters, but I'm giving you some information that you can do nothing with. <laughs> <laughs> they show up at the house. They're like, hey, we own this place. Everything's shut down. There's some sort of a cyber attack, we think. Can we come in? Now, granted, this is not what they say at first. It takes a painstaking amount of time to get this information out because everything takes a painstaking amount in of time in this two plus hour bore fest. The whole movie is built upon a mystery of what's going on outside our little area. Is there a cyber attack? Is there a terrorist attack? Are there aliens? Are there is some natural force or unnatural force? What is going on? And what it is is so lame, so boring, so pedestrian that I just don't even care to get excited about anything going on. And the, the basic scares or the basic tension is nothing more than several scenes of our lead characters running away from objects as they crash. It's so lame. Now, positives, 
cinematography is fantastic. It looks really good. There's some beautiful shots, especially during a beach scene where this giant ship careens into the beach. Looks fantastic. There's also some weird camera shots going on. This guy's really having fun playing with moving the camera around like it's a drone on steroids. The thing's weaving in and out of houses. It's kind of going for a poor man's David Fincher, but not pulling it off in a, in a smart, cool, slick, executed style. Instead, it just comes off as like, I'm trying to be different constantly. And it's happening so often that you could almost, you, you feel a little dizzy. Hope you don't have vertigo. This is not a place you'll want to go. Outside of the cinematography, the music's pretty standard. You know, some, some drums, some, some loud, booming, Christopher Nolan-esque sound effects here and there. Nothing great. As for the characters, I hate almost all of them. <laughs> like, even Scott. Even Scott, who's the most likable, is so vague with everything. And it takes an hour to get any sort of information out that I just want him to stop talking altogether. His daughter is a bitch. She's this teenage brat who thinks she knows it all. Amanda's character by Julia Roberts is for some reason kind of racist and pompous and she's also a bitch and just none of these people are likable. Her kids are garbage. Her youngest daughter just wants to watch Friends. That's the subplot of this movie that they play out for a long time. She's just obsessed with friends and wants to watch it so she can connect to people that she likes. And then the teenage boy is just kind of whatever. He, there's not much to most of these characters. They're one dimensional and they're just kind of lame. Uh, Kay Bake, Kevin Bacon is in this a tiny bit. He's a prepper. He kind of had a feeling something was going wrong and he's gonna be nothing more than your stereotypical backwoods, uh, like conspiracy theorist dick <laughs> just to sum it up the, the concepts in this movie are things we've seen so many times from shows like the walking dead to even lost and just countless other films and shows where oh as soon as you know things start to break down in the world people become untethered and they go crazy and it's all about them and no one else and there's guns pointed at each other and humanity breaks down so fast okay great what else do you have the problem with this movie is it tries to have these lavish moments where big things happen and smash into it and our protagonists run away in front of a green screen it looks pretty good but they, they're, they're very short-lived. There's really not much tension to them at all. And I look at something like, for instance, Twister. Big, dumb, loud film. Kind of wash, rinse, repeat. There's a tornado. Our characters run away from it. There's a bigger tornado. Our characters run away from it. There's the biggest tornado, right? It's all about the spectacle. And the spectacle's fantastic. And in between that, you just have kind of cartoonish characters doing silly things, fighting with each other. There's some drama. There's actual stakes. There's likability. There are, there, there's fun characters. There's a lot of great moments. And it moves very fast. Even if it is two hours. I don't know how long Twister is. It's probably two hours. This movie, in contrast, has only a couple of these large moments. They're very, very quick. And in between them are the most boring, tedious character moments ever by awful characters that you don't like or want to spend time with. Now, there are some decent horror elements, but it's not scary at all. No scares. Don't go into this thing and it's a scary or even chilling movie in the slightest. It's not. But there's just like one or two moments where it's like, okay, this is kind of intense for five seconds and then it's done. The movie as a whole, feels like one third of a film, which is ironic because it's broken into four acts. These four acts feel like they're the first part of an actual movie, like they were building up to something, but then they didn't give us a middle or an ending. Instead, we just have all build up and then there's nothing else. And it ends on such a lame finale with virtually no closure to anyone, not that I care that much, I'm just happy it's done. But this is the worst kind of film you can watch because it's got just enough to keep you dangling. You might fast forward some of the dialogue because it's so lame, but you still are a tiny bit invested in the conspiracy and the mystery. Why are there animals everywhere? What's going on with all of this? 
but then it just boom ends on such a dumb note and yeah i just uh nothing about this really worked for me i was frustrated with it i was annoyed and once again my wife has tricked me with her with her womanly charms and convinced me that adam this is the time they get it right and i know there's there's some good streaming straight to streaming exclusives on netflix i've talked about them but as a whole it's pretty much a dump on all of these platforms okay those are my thoughts i think i said everything i need to without giving anything away leave the world behind another netflix gem streaming right at your fingertips if you have the app let me know if you watched it let me know if you watched this shit maybe you liked it maybe you had a good time good on you i envy you wish i did instead i wasted two hours please like the video if you had a good time subscribe if you haven't i post tons of movie reviews roasts rants live streams each and every week would love to have you stick around also if you really like what i'm doing maybe become a patreon a patreon i always say patreon maybe become a patron at patreon.com slash adam does movies there's just a one dollar tier there's a five a ten it goes up quite a ways but with it you get different perks and i would really appreciate the support it's a, a hobby of mine it's a passion of mine it's a side income for me and uh yeah the supporters really make it happen if you don't want to jump on patreon you can become a member right here on youtube via that youtube join button it works the same way lastly i am on some of the socials i have instagram i have twitter i have tiktok so those are the ones where you can find me. And there's the Discord at Adam Does Movies. Most of them are Adam Does Movies. Sometimes there's a little underscore thing because someone else owns the name, which is fantastic. Just, just wonderful stuff. Okay, thanks for listening and watching. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.